everyone. I am here with uh, Leon Leon Constantine, um, ex ex professional, um, also now working in the agency business. Um, and we we are here today to introduce you to Leon, to our guest today. Um, Leon has made over three hundred and fifty six professional appearances, scoring over ninety one goals, um, spreading um, spreading um, nineteen clubs between 2000 and 2017, um, where he started off his early life, um, pretty much coming from Hackney, um, but of Jamaican parentage, playing for clubs such as Edgeware Town, um, to, to Millwall, to, to Leighton Orient, um, Hardwick Thistle, Brentford, Southend United, um, Peterborough United, um, Torquay United, uh, Port Vale, Leeds United, Oldham Athletic, Northampton Town, Cheltenham Town, Hereford United, York City, Braintree Town, Lewes, Tooting and Mitcham United, Boston United, Arsley, Brimston, Enfield Borough. The people that would be familiar with all of these clubs. But I just want to welcome you um, to the, the Continental Spire Soccer TV podcast. Um, Leon, um, great to have you on here, man. You know, it's good, 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 good to be on there with you as well, mate. I think now kids going to the academies and and the academies really make them soft. They're not really preparing them for the world they're going into. No so, chance. So when you looked at like, you know, if we look at like non-league, and I think non-league is going to become more important, especially after Brexit, because so would you say yeah. non-league is a better route for kids? So if they do get if they do get released, do they should actually consider joining a non-league club where they're actually going to learn those lessons first? And that a hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, I, mm. I'm such a big fan of getting into first team football as soon as possible, right? Because even now you got this virus. All of these guys who are been playing twenty threes football, scared to go on loan. They're going to struggle now, right? Because clubs ain't going to take you because they want to know. You remember, it's not like before where a manager would have a job and you'd have that job for three, four, five, six years. Do you know what I mean? Or they'd move on to a bigger job and mm. someone else will come in. You're in and out of a job within right. six months. Mm. So I speak to managers, obviously, through the agency and they don't care how good you are as a player. Right. All they want to know is... Is this guy going to help me get three points on a Saturday or is he going to cost me? Right. Is he going to turn on the edge of the 18-yard box? Yeah. Because that's what he does at academy level. Or is he going to have the common sense to think, you know what, I need to do this one first time into the channel and support my striker? Right. So I'll give you a perfect example. Is it what's it? Is it Killian Billick? He went on loan to Cheltenham from Arsenal. Mm. The first time I watched this guy play, I wasn't impressed at all. He mm. was trying to turn edge of the box, getting caught on the ball. He was getting shoved off the ball. Just he just looked like one of those academy players just lost. Right. Yeah. Credit to Lee Bowyer. He kept faith in him, and. I'll say the second half of the season, I realised this guy's built himself up. He looked stronger. He looked more, he, he filled out. Yeah. Mm. And he become an absolute player. Right. He's decision making. Mm. He weren't no longer getting caught on the ball on the edge of the box. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He knew when to do the right things. He knew when to, you know what I mean? When to put your foot on the ball and when to release it. And at the end of it, obviously, they got promoted to the championship like Charlton did. And Arsenal offered him another deal. And I think he's kind of looked at and thought, well, why am I going to go and sign another deal at Arsenal and have no chance of making it to the first team? And he went and signed for Derby for 10 million. Right. And he will go on and have a career. Right. But I guarantee you, he's got nine of his teammates who are just happy to sit at Arsenal, wear the tracksuit, come in, play 23s football, 
Do you know what I mean? Don't want to go out on loan because they're scared in case they fell. You know, you know when you talk about like because you talk about the transition of a player like that. Um, and you know when you're you know when you're referring to what he's actually what transition he's had to learn and how twenty three's football is not it's because it's supposed to be the gap, isn't it, from the academy to the first team? So it's supposed to bring those two together. Now, if you look, if you look, because you played for part, I, of I don't game. think it is though, Nick. Yeah, but I think that's the way I'm understanding it. That's that's what that's they what they just do. set up to do. Yeah, but it hasn't. It's not really. It's not really there for the purpose. Like, I mean, I will give you an example. If you, um, for example, you played a part of thistle. You part of, played a part of thistle for you went up yeah. there. And it's funny. I was speaking to. I was speaking to Jackie McNamara about this. You know, um, obviously played oh, for right, yeah. Scotland. And one of the things that he said to me was that was that kids have to be. He was talking to me about Ryan Kent. Um, at Glasgow Rangers, who moved from Liverpool. You think about Liverpool being the big club they are. People are thinking, oh, this guy, Ryan Kent, he's, he went out to Barnsley. He, he's went out, but he's unknown from Liverpool, right? Mm. So then he's, then, he's then going, and, and then, he, you know, he's a really good player. He does decently well, but he was in a very guarded position at Barnsley, you know what I mean? But, yeah. but that, that dynamics, you think, okay, he's done, he's done okay. But then he obviously goes back to Liverpool and then he's back playing 23s football because he can't get into Liverpool's first team. So then, yeah. then obviously, Steven Gerrard at Glasgow Rangers pays nine million pound, or eight or nine million pounds for him, right? So then he goes to a club like Rangers where, when you talked about earlier, like nine, you know, getting three points and, and literally the Rangers fans are getting on his back and he's, he's really struggling. He's struggling. And Jackie McNamara said to me, he said, you, when you have to go at a level, when you go to a club like Rangers or a, a club where the expectation is so so high, and and he said you can see that he hasn't, he's really struggled to make the transition from that level all the way, yeah. and he says he's not really been able to step up the level because he hasn't had that progression. He's really yeah. struggled. so. If you look at, if I look at your situation, Leon. Where you've went from non-league and semi-pro, and you've went through, but you've had these setbacks along the way. But the learning curve has has been gradual, <laughs> so it's been slower, and it's not maybe been at the pace you would have liked. But yeah, if you hadn't had those things, you maybe wouldn't have been prepared. Would, would you agree with that? No, a hundred percent. But you know, going back to that boy, what you're saying has gone to Rangers. He's having a bad time of it. That's just football. He yeah. might come good. Mm. He might come good. And end of the day, Gerard would have mostly been around him because obviously he was doing his coaching at Liverpool. Would have seen something in him to go and table that money on, on, on for him. And if it doesn't work out for him at Rangers, it will go to another club. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because of the day, football is about ups and downs, isn't it? So it is, maybe absolutely. he's not having a good time of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just one of those, one of those things. But you know, like you said, for me, the twenty threes football, yeah, is something that's been the. And this is just my personal opinion. And might, um, I, you know, what I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am, but maybe I, you know, what I mean, I think it's because people are scared to make decisions, right? Yeah, like. They hold on to players because they're scared to say whether you're good or you're not. Right. Do you know what I mean? And what ends up happening, because, you know, people make mistakes. Alex Ferguson said, he, you know, like he's, we talk about Yap Stam. Yeah. To this day, he'll say it's the biggest mistake he ever made. But he owns it. Yeah. What happens now? You release a kid. Okay. You don't. He has his two-year pro, and then you feel like, you know what, I don't think he's going to get into the first team here. Right. We're not going to keep him for the 23s. He goes on and has a career somewhere else. You can lose your job. Right. Because the club like, ah, oh, you should have kept him. Why didn't you keep... Do you know what I mean? Right. People develop at different stages. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, you might, you might develop later on. Right. You know, 
But what ends up happening, you play these 23s football, and if you don't make that jump into the first team, or you don't set a light on loan anywhere, you're lost. Right. And you're out of the game. Because some of these guys, they play 23s at Arsenal, they can't even get into Cheson or Billericke's first team. Right. Um, now, that doesn't even make no sense. So, I go... So that's my point on 23. I just think 23's football is 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 devised because people can't make decisions. Right. I say so players get kept on for longer than they should do. Yeah. Now, when I was coming up, okay, it was youth team football reserves. Now, in that reserve team, so I'll I'll give you an example, Millwall. Yeah. Okay. I could be playing up front with Neil Harris, who's just come back from injury. Right, who's now the Cardiff City manager, Neil Harris. Yeah, I could be playing or had played with Lucas Neil. Played with Tim Cahill. So, mm. like I said to you before, even though I didn't play for the first three years of turning pro, the education that mm. I got and I learned from playing with some of these guys who went on to play in the Premier League is what made me have a career. Right. Because I learned, so when I went into Millwall, obviously because I was new, sometimes um, under Ray Harford, God rest his soul, I had to play in defence. Right. Yeah? I'm not a defender, I don't know anything about defending, but I would be defending with Sean Dyche. Right. So I would just watch what Sean Dyche does. When he pushes, I'll push up. When he drops, I'll drop. Right. Do you know what I mean? And because I could control the ball, I used to get the ball and run it out of defence and find my midfielder or find the striker's feet. What did you... Just to kind of ask you on that, um, how did you feel like when you were playing when you were playing with um, Sean Dice, obviously we know the way he plays with Burnley. <laughs> Many people yeah. that watch Burnley. Um, would you say... What did you learn from him in terms of when you played with him? What did you... How, how would you summarise that from an education perspective? Ah, uh, just... He's talking. Mm. Um, he's positional play. Um, never giving a striker time to control the ball and make a decision as to when he's going to pass it. He'll be up, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So you learn so much. You see certain things, what they're doing, you know. Um, and obviously the job he's done at Burnley is just... Yeah, it's, you know, it's, un it's not unbelievable. Like, do you know what I mean? But, you know, you could... I knew from a, from an early age he would always be a manager. I knew, I, I, you can just see he had that in him. Do you know what I mean? Right. You wow. know, very professional. Um, you know, applied himself. Obviously, made the most of the tools that he had at his, at, at his disposal. You know, he ain't going to do quiet turns on the edge of the box. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? But he was a defender. That's what his job was to do, to stop yeah. the ball from going in the back of the net. So if you're going to shoot, he'll stick his face there. He'll, he'll stick his body there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So he had the fundamentals of what was needed to be a success in that position that he played. Do you know what I mean? Right. And so you can see his teams are very well drilled and they're very organised. What about what about like Lucas Neal? Um, when you look, because obviously he had obviously had a very good career. In fact, his dad's from Belfast. This whole family's from Belfast, funnily enough. Um, and I mean, he was he was quite a sensation because I think it was it was a Barry Silkman. I think brought him the famous days, and Barry Silkman brought him to Millwall. I suppose that's that's kind of what I was told. I can't about. remember who brought him to Millwall, but I know Ray Harford put him into Blackburn. Right. Because okay. when he was at Millwall, he was with us playing in the reserves. He should have been playing in the first team, but the manager just didn't like him. Okay. That's and then one day, one day, I saw, obviously he was, you know, he was more experienced than I was. So when I used to come into training and, you know, I could understand his frustration as to why he wasn't playing or why he wasn't involved. And, um, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do gym work. He just come in and train. He just wasn't asked. And then one day, I remember like 
seeing him training hard in the gym. And I was thinking, what are you doing in there? You don't normally do gym work, you know what I mean? Mm. And literally a few months after that, he went into Blackburn. And I thought, oh, right, that's why. Right. Do you know what right. I mean? And he went into Blackburn and he never, ever looked back. Right. He never, ever looked back. He went on and done what he was supposed to do, which he would have done at Millwall had he been given that, that chance. But as I say, at the time, the manager had whatever reasons to not play him. Yeah. I think they were personal because um, it was nothing to do with his ability because he was a very good player. What would you mm. say in terms of when you look at like the agency game now, for example, if you look at um, how tough a job is for an age, and what is your, and you kind of, and you recruit and you recommend players to clubs, what's kind of your personal philosophy? How has that changed over the years? Well, obviously, for me, like I always say, the game has changed so much. Mm. You know, players, parents, I feel sorry for the parents because, as I said, a lot of them come from, you know, less privileged backgrounds. Mm. So an agent comes in and says, oh, I'll give you a hundred grand if your son signs with us. You right. can't blame them. You can't blame them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But my thing to the parents is, do you think someone's going to give you a hundred grand and not wanting their hundred grand back. Right. Yeah. Right. And if they do want to get it back, they're going to direct your child down the path of the quickest route to getting that hundred grand back plus more. Right. So that might not be the best pathway for your child, but that's where they're going to direct them to because they want to get their money back. Right. Do right. you know what I mean? So I wouldn't, Give money. It's different if a club wants to give you money. Mm. Clubs do it. That's clubs do it all the time. A club will, you know, look. We want to sign your son. We'll help with your relocation. We'll give you a title or a job. That's different. That's a club. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Your mm. son. They, you know, they believe in your child. Right. And obviously, no, you, you know, you come as a package. But an agent, they want their money back. So that's it in regards to the player. You've got to believe in the player as well. You know, I could go in and I have people, oh, I need an agent. I can't represent you if I don't believe in you. Right. right. Do you know what I mean? If I'm going to you to another club, I need to, you know, believe in what you can bring to the table. Right. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I'm very wary of players who only want to sign with agents. You know, right. I spoke to you, Nick, the other day about the financial guy that I, 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 I deal with, yeah? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, that's the kind of conversations, yeah? If I'm dealing with a young player, is right, okay, I don't want you to make the mistakes that I made, waste money and be in trouble come the end. I don't want you to do that. So, right. if you sign a two-year deal on X amount of money, we need to work out what you want to have at the end of that two-year deal. Right. Yeah? Do you want to have a mortgage? Do you want to have the deposit for a house? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, we're talking about helping these players during their careers and making sure they're okay after their careers. Absolutely. 70% of footballers go bankrupt. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? Because Absolutely. the money you earn in football, yeah, especially mm. when you... Don't forget, you're earning more money than people that's got master's degree. So, Absolutely. if you haven't got a master's degree, where on God's earth are you going to earn that kind of money outside of football? Right. Yeah. Now, if you've got uh, mm. outgoings or a lifestyle, yeah, because one thing my dad always told me, it's not what you earn, is what you save. Right. Yeah. So if you earn a hundred grand a week, but you're spending a hundred grand a week. Right. Yeah. You're going to be broke, ain't you? Absolutely. hundred percent. If you earn 50 grand a week, but you're saving 10 or you're saving 20. Yeah. You're going to be in a better position than a man that's earning even double what you're earning. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. these are the kind of conversation. This is what I enjoy. That side of things, like mm. you know, helping the player, having proper conversations with the player and supporting the player. So with Lau Taylor, like I, like the the striker at Charlton. Yeah. In the last three years, he his whole career has transcended upwards because he's got a good support network behind him. Right. We're always at his game. That's another thing as well. You know, we're not those agents going to, you know, if I'm going to take you on board, mm. I need to know I'm going to be coming to your games so right. I can help you. Like, so, for instance, Lau, I think I get to maybe 90% of Lau's games. Right. That's quite a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Absolutely. even some of the away games, someone else within the company will get to the away game. So he knows where before, when I was a player, my agent would come to my game maybe three, four times in a season. Wow. So how many games in a season? 30, 38, 46 if you're in championship or league one. Yeah. So yeah. Out of four games, he'll come to four of them. So the rest of those games, when he calls me, oh, how'd you get on? I could do every, I could tell him anything. Uh, you know what? This one, John didn't pass it. Nick was greedy as usual. Blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. I can make up anything. Whereas, mm. because we're always at our players' games, yeah, you can't kid a kidder. If I, you haven't no. done your job or you could have done better, I'm there to tell you, like, look, you know what I mean? Love, I think you could have made a run there or, you know what, you've done well there, but you could have got your head up early. Do you know what I mean? Right. Now, when you're having those conversations over the course of a season the next game you, you, you go into is like whoa okay this is what I done wrong last time mm. this is maybe what I need to do right this time do you know what I mean yeah absolutely yeah and that is mostly why yeah because of that support network he's got between myself and the company um, SMI world yeah is why he's mostly um performing week in, week out, you know, he's mostly the hottest striker outside the Premier League. And so, you know, one of the questions I had, so when you look at like an agent and you see, like you were saying about, they would be offered a hundred pairs, but that's what kids are motivated by. Um, mm. I mean, to give you an example, like the, they were actually saying, like, I mean, if you look at, I mean, if you're looking now and you look at what, kids are looking at an agent is almost seen as like oh i've got an agent it's like i've got somebody working for me it's kind of seen as like the prestige that the kids and parents might view it as but what do you what do you think people what should parents really be thinking about whenever their child or what should a player be thinking about so if a player's chopping and changing agent what would you say Parents need to think about what. Why should why do players chop and change? What do you think they should? Parents be need about? to be thinking about: Are you going to look after my child? Right. Are you going to support my child? Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, and I'll give you an example: Snod Robert Snodgrass. Yeah, mm. financially set for the rest of his life. Yeah, but yet still. The moment he talks about most, yeah, mm. is when he had an injury that he thought was going to be the end of his career, he was able to talk to his agent, yeah, about how it was for him when his career finished with injury. Right. So those conversations that they had over that period of time is what helped him go get through that, that bad patch that negative patch, that mental health patch. Right. You know, where, you know, it's not about the money. Do you know what I mean? You might not be able to play the game that you love. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. And yeah. that's why all of us that are in the agency are all ex-pros. Right. Because nearly every single emotion that you will go through as a player, we've mostly had some experience in that. In, in, in that. Right. Which means we can help you. Right. We can support you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? 
So would you say you from know? your experience, um, Leon, would you say, because you didn't have that support system as a player, so you actually understand what a player really does need mentally? Yeah, of course. Mm. 100%, 100%. Like, mm. you know, like uh, even me, like, you know, I speak to some people who are agents and it are, oh, yeah, I went to one game this week. Or I went to, I'm at two, three, four games in, in a week. Mm. Yeah. But, I don't look at it as work. I enjoy what I do because I'm very passionate about it. Unfortunately, with football, it attracts a lot of skullduggery in yeah. a sense where because it's, so much, it's a multi-billion pound industry, everyone wants to get involved and nick some money. Do you know what I mean? You know, you've got a man who was, you know, just... Never played the game, never done anything. All of a sudden, they want to be an agent. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, quite literally, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't just wake up one morning and say I'm going to be a lawyer. Right. You know what I mean? There's years. It takes years. It yeah. takes years of experience and, and dedication. Do you know what I mean? And you so... Know, how do you think the lawyer feels that's been dedicating his whole life from... He left school, went to university, went to law school, mm. yeah, to then become a lawyer. Then some kid just walks in off the street, says, I want to be a lawyer, and mm. takes all the big cases. Right. right. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't, you know, seem, yeah. doesn't seem quite right. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I was watching, I watched that um, show, Sunland Till I Die. I watched it on Netflix. Oh, I'm watching it at the minute, no. And you know what's interesting, right? There was that kid, um, uh, Joshua, um, what's his name? Oh, um, I can't pronounce his last name. Ajayi, I think. Aj Aj oh, I can't pronounce his last name. And he was the striker for Sunderland, right? And at a point then, he obviously ends up leaving, you know what I mean? Now, okay. when he left, right, he left, um, which I think is the same agency that represents Jaden Sancho, right? He left and... Basically, he went, obviously, for a lot of money. Now, I looked at that situation, and my personal opinion was I wouldn't have had him leave. I believe if something's not broken, don't fix it. Um, and it's usually, do you ever notice, Leon, that if you're going to do something, just don't do it for the money. Do it because it's the right situation for that, for that player. And so I looked at the player from an agency perspective, and I thought, well, he could stay at this club because he's scoring goals. He's in a settled team. They're obviously mm. moving up. Um, and obviously he's in League One, but then he moved to France to, I think it was Bordeaux. Um, but now he's, he's, he's struggled since he's went there. And uh, apparently, apparently, I don't know how true it is, but obviously I heard from people I'd spoken to in the game, they said his agent was paid the guts of a million pounds. Yeah, yeah. This is what I keep trying to say to you. This is a point I was making before about agents who direct players, not necessarily that's going to benefit them, but it's going to benefit their pocket. Right. right. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, like with Lau, so we, I, had a, I had an opportunity, um, we had an opportunity to take him somewhere where we would have got paid, do you know what I mean? Quite good money. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. I had the conversation, we had the conversation with him and said, look, to be honest with you, yeah, mm. this club want you, but the manager of this club, I guarantee you, three months into this, uh, into you signing, you're going to want to get, you're going to want to get out. Mm. Because I know this manager and I know you and him are going to clash. Right. Right. So then we directed him to somewhere where we knew the manager, obviously Charlton, an ex-pro in Lee Bowyer. He's going to put his arm around you when he wants, when he needs to, but he's also going to put you in your place when you need that as well. Right. Okay? But ultimately, he's going to get the best football out of you. Right. Okay? Right. So, those are the cards we put on the table. Mm. And we said, right, what, what, what's your thoughts? Right. He agreed with what we said. And now he's in a position where 
the next deal he signs is going to be life changing money. Right. Yeah. So because he didn't rush and and because it's impatience. Well, it's just, it? it's just, it's we mm. we gave him the you know end of the day. Mm. This is their livelihood, you know. Yeah. You can't, and I, I don't like when people paint pictures. Like you said, that agent you paint the picture, go to Bordeaux, lovely, like, all that kind of stuff, because you know he's going to get it from the club. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it's not to say, don't get me wrong, mistakes happen. People make a move, you know, to a club, and it doesn't work out for whatever reason. Mm. It's not because the agent's been greedy. It's not always that situation. But yeah, absolutely. a lot yeah. of times, it does happen because of that. But yeah. I think if you have an honest conversation with the player, yeah, which I think they're entitled to, and if you're dealing with younger players, you've got to speak to the parents. And right. I would hope the parents would look at us and think, you know, you guys have had X amount of years of experience in the game. I trust your opinion. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But ultimately, we're here to work with you, not against you. Right. And give you the pros and cons for everything. So, look, go to this club. You can earn good money, but there will be a chance that you might not enjoy your football as much. Or, you know what I mean? The manager might not be there long, which means you're going to have to deal with another new manager coming in who might not like... Do you know what I mean? Like, you give them the pros and cons, and then, right. you know, we make a joint decision. Mm. I mm. think that's very important. Mm. And so, so when you, you know, and the, that's the way I, that's the way we operate. Okay. That's the way we operate as a, as, 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 as an agency. Do you know what I mean? And we want, maybe it's the right way. Maybe it's the wrong way. I don't know. There's other, like you said, there's agencies out there earning a million quid of a deal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, end of the day, we want to make sure the player is happy. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then obviously we will get paid for our services. That's yep. what you're in it for. But yep. ultimately, you know, the player's happy. Like when I moved to Leeds, I knew the agent I had at the time. If I'd have had him from the beginning of my career, I would have done so much more because he knew how to do things the right way. And I was happy with what I got. And I didn't care what he got. He's worked for it. I was happy. I was happy. Do you know what I mean? It was a yeah. good relationship. You know, it, it's interesting. I mean, I was speaking to Jackie McNamara about this because he was talking to me about, he was telling me about a about a player, um, uh, and I was kind of speak. I was speaking to him about it, and I know that I know you had mentioned to me about a, a player. He moved to, um, he moved. I think his name was Joe Rebo. He was he was at obviously obviously he was at Charlton, but obviously Charlton, he yeah. Moved. yeah. And you you see where. Sometimes, and one of these Jackie McNamara was even sending me where he's seen moves because he was represented by Paul Stratford, the the agent of Wayne Rooney. And one of the things he was he was talking to me about was there's two what's happening too often in the agency world, and maybe you can shed light on this. He said a player will move right, but in there's most cases the agent is actually making. Obviously, things have to be fair. The agent obviously has to make money, but he was saying that the agent in some cases is making more money per week than what the player is making. That's ridiculous. Um, so that's, and, that, that is, that is when you think about it on a logical scale, right? Yeah. How can that even be possible? Right. It's like a boxer, mm. a promoter making more money than a boxer. Right. That's why I take my hat off to Mayweather because He's the one that goes in. He's the one that takes the risks. He's the one that has to perform. Yeah? yeah. And, you know, he's got a fantastic team. And, yeah, his whole team makes money. Of course they do. But they can't be making more than him. Absolutely. Yeah, there's something do you know what I mean? If I'm helping there. a player, like, imagine Lowe every week busting his balls. Every week, you know, playing for 90 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Like, I say to Lowe, I've told him from the beginning, listen, I can't make you a better player. You either you're good or you're not. Right. Yeah. But what I can do, yeah, because when you're dealing with football, mm. yeah, and playing the game of football, yeah, mm. it's your mindset. You see the people with the strongest mind, yeah? Those are the ones that can perform. Right. Yeah? Absolutely. On a week-to-week -week basis. Mm. Yeah? So all I've done with Lau, or all we've done as a company, is mm. just talk with him 
and make sure mentally, yeah, he's okay. Right. Because we know if he's okay mentally, we know what he can bring to the table come a Saturday or a Tuesday, whatever they play. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And obviously in the last few years, he's been doing that hand over fist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas mm. if you're, you know, got a player that's whining about this or whining about that or why, all of a sudden, it starts to affect their game. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because Absolutely. you have to be, your focus and concentration level come three o'clock on a Saturday has to be at its, at its ultimate. You know what I mean? It has to be. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you're dealing with the crowd. You're dealing with, you know, maybe having a bad touch in the first 10 minutes of the game. Mm. You know, how can you mentally get past that when your own supporters might be, you know, getting on your back as well as their away supporters? You know, you've got to have that belief in yourself. Do you know what I mean? And that takes, that don't just happen overnight. That takes, you know, weeks and weeks and years of com communication with people that's been through that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. You know, and that's where all of us, as an agency where we've all had that experience and, you know, in the game, you know, right. that is where we're able to help. Right. You know, like even, you know, we've got our, we've got players in our books that's, you know, been released. Right. You know, have I been released? Of course I have. Yeah. So I know exactly how you're feeling right now. Mm. You mm. feel like it's the end of the world. You feel like you're the only player in the whole world that's been released. You can't see where you're going to, you know, get another club. Right. Do you know what I mean? So that's, this is where now my job is to help you through that patch. Right. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Not send you 10 pairs of boots. Ah, don't worry, you've been released. Here's 10 pairs of boots. Right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not, that's not going to help you really, is it? I mean, you know. You know, that's... right now, mm. a lot of people all over the country, all over the world, are shitting themselves. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What do I do now? What happens? Mm. You mm. know? And you need to have that support network behind you because, like I said, the game is very cool. Once you're released, you're no longer that club's problem anymore. Okay. So anybody that wants to get a hold of Leon, he'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And um, hope any, any, any comments, obviously don't forget to follow us at at uh, Continental Aspire Shop, you can get us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, leave your comments in the in the section below. And uh, Leon, thank you very much for today. Um, it's been a real education um, for yeah. everyone, and hopefully everybody's enjoyed it. <laughs> it's been brilliant. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Leon. <laughs>